Okay, I'm diving in the Clackamas River at High Rocks. You just love High Rocks. You can see the current coming from my right to my left. You can see an island just above me as I go down. I'm heading into the current, but actually this is a back current. And so I'm going underneath and I will then pick up the current that actually is going downstream and go downstream. Now I'm going to hold on here. The green part of those rocks is freshwater algae. And it is uh, endemic in the, the water here. I'm downstream a little bit further and I come to this tree. It's a marker tree for me and I use it to try and go downstream. Here I'm using, I'm, I'm in the eddy of the tree and I'm using it for handholds to hold against the current. But above me there's a rapid and my float is caught in that rapid and it's trying to pull me off. So it's going to pull and I'm going to lose it there and go downstream. Now I've gone under the rapid and I'm downstream a little further. You can see there's still quite a lot of current, but I've found a fishing, a fisherman's nightmare. <laughs> this rock has caught several different lures and I'm trying to free this one and grab it. We'll see if I'm successful here. Whoops, there it goes in the current. It's gone. Well, I'll put my knife back and then I've got to go over this rock and sit in the lee of it and reach down and try and pick up the rest of what's there from the fisherman. Okay, you can see the weights and the sinkers there. Oh, there's a dead, yep, it's a dead lamprey. Now these lampreys come up from the salt water and spawn in the river here. They come up the Columbia and then up the Willamette and now up the, Cl the Clackamas. And this one has spawned and is, has already uh, passed. There's a crawdad right beside it there. It's looking for a meal actually. I'm going to take a look, a closer look at him for you. Okay, my camera comes off my head, and you can see I'm wearing a weird thing on my, my mask. It's called a Cewiscope I. And the last two letters, EY, is for uh, ever young. Basically, it was developed for us older divers who have who are farsighted and can't see close to us. Okay, I'm going to grab the rest of those lures there, pull them off the rock. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead. And, it's going to take a moment here, but I'm going to put them in the pocket of my buoyancy compensator. I've got a specially de de designed BC or buoyancy compensator that has a very large pocket right in front that I like a lot. Now you can see I'm wearing a double hose regulator and this regulator has bubbles that come out behind me and that's going to be of advantage as I come downstream and get into deeper water because I want to take a look at the red-sided shiners. The red-sided shiners are a fish that in the summer right in the beginning of the season develops red sides because they're about ready to spawn. Now these have already spawned and are no longer uh, in their, their red colors. But if I hold my breath they'll come closer. Here we go. Now you can see that they, they've got a very nice yellow stripe on their side, but they don't have the red sides. I think there's maybe one or two that still has the red side. Here they are in deeper water. 
hold my breath again and see if I can get much closer. I'm looking up because sometimes these red side shiners will uh, also have uh, Chinook smolt in with them because the Chinook kind of like to gather with them and it provides them some cover as they go downstream. I've taken the camera off again on, and I'm holding it in my right hand and this should give you some idea of the size of these fish. They're about four to six inches and if I can get closer to them I will. There's the fish. You can see they're not too large, but they do school up in these deeper holes after they've spawned. Let's see if I can get even closer to them. Okay, here's a small school of them. And as you look up, you can see my float line up above. I'm in about 22 feet of water right here. Okay, after looking around a little bit, I'm going to head downstream. This is drift dive you can see that I'm not swimming real hard because the current is pretty good still probably a half knot to a knot current but I'm just drifting with the current now I'm, I've stopped and I'm going to show you something I'm examining with my seawiscope eye uh, the underside of a rock that I just turned over and I'm going to show you what's on that take a look Ooh, it moves those are insect nymphs that live on the bottom side of these rocks. Those will hatch out into flying, flying insects later in the year. Here I'm, I'm examining them at uh, very close range. Now whenever I take one of these rocks, I put it back down and I turn it over and put it back down. I'm getting in shallow water now near my exit point, but I'm going to stop and play around with these sculpin. These are coast range sculpin that are endemic throughout the Pacific Northwest up into Canada in the rivers. And they're very territorial little guys, somewhat aggressive little guys too, and they're not scared of much. If I take my finger and use my finger, they can be attracted to it. Watch this. Ooh, it takes a nibble off my finger. If I really poke him, then he'll move just a little bit. There's another one up there. Now, the other one doesn't like this other one coming out because they're kind of territorial, like I said. Here he's sampling my finger again just to see if it's something edible. Now there's a crayfish, and the crayfish is actually not too attracted to my finger. It thinks it's something that he needs to get away from. And he's moving away. Well, it's getting towards my exit point. And I'm going to go up. Usually I take a, a peek to see where I'm at in the water. Oh, there's some people down there. I'll get down again and go down and see if I can get up closer to them without them seeing me. I've dumped my float because my float actually on this dive deflated. It, after three years, it uh, 
I suffered a very large rip and I had to get rid of it. I came back a little later after I got to my car and picked it up. There's people again. I'm down again. I'll get a little bit closer and see. Let's see if I can sneak up on them a little bit. Okay, let's take a look. There's got a little kid there. <laughs> and they're feeding ducks. I think I gotta have some fun with the ducks. Okay. I'm gonna hold my breath and see if I can get under those ducks. There goes some more. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, time to get out. <laughs> that dog doesn't know what to think of me. What's that strange thing? Hello there. Hello there. It sometimes takes me a couple of minutes to get out because I've got to take my fins off and they're attached fairly strongly to my feet. Sometimes it's hard to, to get the fins off. I have a special equipment strap on my BC that I've attached my fins to. And that's what I'm trying to do here. First one foot and then the second foot. Okay, got them off. Now the transition out of the water, especially when you're wearing some scuba gear and weights and stuff uh, is pretty critical and I use mountaineering techniques of handholds and three points of contact when I'm in this really slippery kind of dangerous for a fall zone right here until I get up just a little bit more on the solid rock that's dry and I feel like I can stand up. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my What's this strange creature coming out of the water, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll uh, I'll let the ducks come back. Oh, that was one of my finds. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, up above high rocks. <laughs>